What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 6 of our Tottenham Hotspur Let's Play here in Football Manager 2017 and today I have for you guys a live commentary from Vicarage Road, it's going to be against Watford, it's not the game that I said I was going to do and uh, well the reason for that being is that this game bizarrely, is a top-of-the-table clash at the top of the Premier League. As you can see here, Watford unbeaten. We hope to end that run today for them. 18 games into the season, of course, this game marks the halfway point. We are currently sat in second place. And, uh, well, we have had a fair few games that we've played since the last episode, so let's have a look through them. Six, in fact. So the first game we have here was a disappointing result. We had a collapse against Stoke City. Um, it was a game which didn't get off to the best start really for us, uh, that being uh, because, of course, well, th they opened up the scoring. This was a very weird game, though, to be honest. Um, as we go through this game, you'll probably kind of get an idea of that. As you can see, Onartovic opening up the scoring early on in the first half. And, uh, well, we fought back well. And at this point, when we fought back, I was like, you know, we've got this now. This is the start of the comeback. We're going to go on. We're going to get another goal in this second half. And, unfortunately, that simply didn't happen. Uh, so this was the only goal we scored in the game. It was a, a good goal, ultimately. Harry Kane lashing it in, as he has done throughout this season. He has continued with his fine goal-scoring form, I'm pleased to say, and, well, he got another one here. Unfortunately for us, however, that was all that we really had to cheer about in this game. In the 88th minute, uh, Stoke took the lead, and they managed to get another goal to close out the game right at the death as we kind of committed men for desperately looking for a goal. This one by Mbula, a nice little goal. It was a Charlie Adam banger, however, that really capped off this game. When this went on, uh, when this went in rather, I was in a bit of a stake of shock. It was a nice goal, and Bula lays it off to him, I do believe, and then it's just Charlie Adam, sledgehammer, bang, pick that out, absolutely no chance for Laurie in goal. It finished 3-1, I feel like it was a little bit of a smash and grab by Stoke, but as you'll see as we go through these games, we had a fair share of our luck, and in fact, one of these games which we had a fair share of our luck in was this game against Juventus. We completely FM'd them, we had one shot on target and one 2-1, um... Let's have a look at these highlights. It was a weird game. I rotated the team fairly heavily. Uh, I didn't necessarily... I don't want to say I didn't think we were going to win this game, but I decided to completely rotate the side just to ensure that the league could remain our own focus. And, uh, well, the fact that we won with a fairly rotated side was good. Harry Kane not starting. I'm not sure how that ball trickled in. It was a bit of a, a howler by Buffon. But Anoma was there to kind of capitalise on that opportunity. And, uh, well, we got a second goal just three minutes later in the 76th minute. And, uh, well, they were the only two shots of the game that we had. But they both found their way into the back of the net. And, ultimately, that that's what matters. But perhaps looking at some of the players here, you can see players like Carroll, uh, Meyer playing Anoma. It was a very rotated side. Obviously, Janssen up top ahead of... Harry Kane for this game. So the fact that we won 2-1, a really good performance. We did concede a goal very, very late on from a set piece, which was a little bit disappointing. A clean sheet would have been nice. It was Benucci with the header there for Juve, but well, we held on and we got an important win there. Anyway, following on from that, we went on to hit some really, really good form in the league. As you can see here, the first game against Crystal Palace, uh, we won 4-0. An amazing result, this one. We actually had eight clear-cut chances in this game, so it was a little bit disappointing in some ways that we didn't do any better, if I'm being honest. But still, great performance, great goals by Eriksen and Harry Kane. Obviously, always good to see Harry Kane get on the score sheet. And, oh uh, well, we continued on our scoring ways with a 3-0 win against Burnley. Eriksen, Deli Alli and Lamela with the goals in this game. Perhaps worth noting that with Deli Alli, a player who uh, I criticised early on, I'm going to be honest, this season for his form, I didn't think he was playing very well for us. He really has stepped up playing in a deep line playmaker role. Uh, you can see here he got a 7 rating against Stoke in the defeat. He then got a 7.3 against Palace, a 9.0 against Burnley in the game that we just talked about, which he scored in. And uh, in a defeat against Leicester, he still got a 7.0 rating. So he really has stepped up playing in that deep line playmaker role. Obviously, to start the season, we were playing him off. Um, Harry Kane at centre attack in mid didn't really work but he's definitely found a space in the kind of the squad now anyway the next game that we played was against Swansea this game was pretty much done and dusted before half time we were 3-0 up uh, really convincing performance Harry Kane Lamella and uh, Son Hyung Ming with a goal Son will be starting today's game against Watford um, the South Korean player he's really impressed me to be honest when he's played he's been pretty unfortunate with injuries uh, as you can see here he's been out with a sprained ankle for four weeks as of late but he's back for today's boxing 
uh, day tie. And I'm hoping that you can give a good performance for us here. Uh, Lamella actually got man of the match. Worth knowing that the 24-year-old, he's had a bit of a, a rough start to time under us, but he really has stepped up in recent games, which is pleasing to be able to say. So, uh, yeah, a player who, I, I don't know, I really like Lamella. I think he's a very, very good player. But he has been ousted a little bit in favour of players like Berahino as of late, but he turned up good in that game. Unfortunately, what would have been an amazing run of results going into this Watford game came to a screeching halt as we lost against Leicester a Jamie Vardy penalty the difference uh, very disappointing obviously to lose with an 84th minute goal a late goal at that uh, it was a disappointing performance a bad day at the office really we didn't have that clinical finishing which we demonstrated in previous games and unfortunately for us Leicester ran out 1-0 victors at home so anyway, in terms of the Premier League, where that leaves everything lying, as you can see, right now we're in second place. We are four points behind Watford, so even beating them here today um, wouldn't see us go top, which is a little bit disappointing, really. But Watford have been absolutely superb. They've won all their games as of late. Uh, towards the bottom of the Premier League table, Chelsea in the relegation zones. They've sacked Conte. In fact, they sacked him a little while ago now. They sacked him right at the start of the month. And, uh, well, they've got a new man in charge in Biesla. I can never say his name. But you, you know the guy, the Argentine, form, formerly of Marseille. Someone's going to tell me how to pronounce his name in the comments. Thank you very much to you, that person. Anyway, the other signing, uh, or the other managerial change at the moment, uh, not fully kind of happened just yet. Pep Guardiola was sacked, and uh, at the moment, Lee Carsley taking training. Uh, I assume that's a, a kind of caretaker appointment. You can see it is there at the moment. So, well, Man City looking for a new manager. They've not had a good start to the year. They find themselves in 12th as well. And uh, really, when you look at the Premier League table as a whole, there is a big gulf, really, uh, between ourselves and kind of the likes of Manchester United and Arsenal. Um, you know, it's it's a fairly healthy margin we've got there going into the halfway stage of the season. Looking at player stats, Harry Kane, player of the tournament um, right now. He's been absolutely superb for us. Top average rating, 17 goals in 16 games. Hopefully, he can give a good performance here today as we are going to be looking to beat Watford, who, as I mentioned right at the beginning, are unbeaten. So anyway, let's get into today's game at Vicarage Road. In terms of how uh, Watford are setting up, they like to play this 3-5-2 or 5-3-2, depending on how you want to look at it. I did notice that during the um, kind of the, the pre-game tactical advice stuff, um, where is it? Where, where, where are we looking? The pre-analysis. Here we go. Um, Watford are actually most susceptible to playing a 4-2-3-1 wide, which is what we play. So I'm hoping that's going to play into our favour. Um, they, they seem to struggle with that a little bit. So we'll see what uh, we can do in that regard. But they recently beat West Ham 5-2. They're a very good team, Watford. Uh, and if we just have a quick look at their squad, because you're probably wondering who are the players performing well. Really, it's been Igalo and Dini's goals which have made the difference for them. Igalo, as you can see here, 14 goals in 16 games for him. Troy Dini, 9 goals in 18. Uh, I, neither striker's that good, actually. They've just been performing really, really well, which I guess is fair play to them. And uh, when you've got two kind of strikers there scoring 26 goals between them in 18 games... You're going to win a fair few matches, and that's kind of been Watford's uh, key to their success, and hopefully today we can shut them down. So anyway, let's get into today's game. Looking at our squad, um, Berahino currently out injured. A bit of a miss he is today. He's out with a cold, so he's actually back tomorrow. Elsewhere, Janssen out injured again. He's got the flu, so uh, a few of our players suffering from winter blues. Of course, Janssen recently out with a hernia just a few months ago, so thankfully it's not too major an injury. Carl Walker is out for a while with a sprayed ankle. Uh, he's actually going to be back in about a week or two, which is kind of nice, of course. Danilo right now kind of has the right-back position nailed down, and he's been playing fairly well in that role for us since of course joining us from Real Madrid this year anyway looking at our team as a whole obviously Vertonghen and Arda Weireld, a lot I expected of them today uh, going into today's game to try and shut down the uh, kind of Dini and Igalo partnership um, so that's something to keep an eye out on obviously I mentioned Dali Ali coming into great form at the moment in this kind of deep line playmaker role uh, in the midfield it's a, a role that he's been doing very very well as of late he's adapted um, to this new system the new centre mid partnership has definitely worked better I think it's fair to say you kind of look at uh, our games as of late uh, really since the Arsenal game with the exception of the Stoke defeat, we've been fairly good defensively, um, when you can, especially when you kind of consider that to our form before where we were leaking goals quite severely for a little while. So either way, let's submit our team for today's game, hoping that Harry Kane can bang some in for us, but we have got options on the bench. It's a little bit of a miss having Berahino because he's the kind of striker that I'd like to have to be able to bring on in this kind of situation. Uh, but we have got Correa, uh, Dembele, Sissoko, Thiago Maia, Ben Davis and Vimmer on the pitch. So there are options there. 
So anyway, let's see how we get on. Actually, they've got a few players carrying injuries. Pereira, the uh, Argentine, a very, very talented player. Uh, he's not actually got an injury. He's just struggling for fitness. So I guess he's coming back from an injury. Yeah, he twisted his knee. Would that, have, that that probably wouldn't have been it, actually. So I wonder what he's injured with. Potential fine injury. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's probably not been publicly disclosed. And the same for Jan, Matt. I assume they... Um, are risking those players today. They've got Agalo and Dini starting up top, but as I said right at the beginning, they're susceptible to play in the system that we play. Of course, they are a London rivals of sorts, Watford, and this is a massive game for us. It's not a game that I necessarily thought I'd be live coming with so much significance on it, but for us, this would close the gap on them uh, to one point. Of course, if we lose this, we'll be seven points adrift of Watford, who will be leading the table at the halfway point. Anyway, let's get into 2D Classic and make sure we have... Um, the key camera on. Uh, we will have the goals on the behind goal low camera, which I'm 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 fond of. I'll be honest; it's one of my favourite additions this year in FM. So anyway, let's see how we get on here. Obviously, early chance going to be coming someone's way. Dele Ali with the ball lays it off to Son, who's been out injured. But when I first took over, I didn't really see a spot in the squad for Son. But he's been scoring when he has played, when he has been fit. We're giving him a chance today, and hopefully, he can come good for us. He is going to be cutting inside the number seven. Tries to lay it off to Harry Kane. Now a big ball over the top. Desperately trying to seek out uh, Troy Deeney, uh, number nine there. He's probably the faster of the two strikers, although they're both fairly rapid um, compared to our centre-backs. I wouldn't say they're explosively fast. They're not kind of Bellerin with 20 acceleration and 20 pace, but they are players worth keeping an eye on. Either way, we have a chance here. Danilo crosses it in. Lamella probably should have done better there. It was saved away. Good to see Danilo getting involved in the play higher up the pitch, but that was a great opportunity. Ball not cleared, though. Deli Ali. Is the chance dead or is there more coming? Ericsson, Kane, can he finish it? He can't. A fantastic tackle there. Uh, last ditch by Watford. I'm not sure who it was who stuck in a foot for them. But it has made a difference. And while 10 minutes gone, we have another chance here. Set piece, ball whipped in. It's going to be Gomez collecting that with relative ease. The Brazilian experienced goalkeeper. And uh, now they're going to try and build from the back. Ball up to Igalo. Danilo misses an interception. What was he doing having to play down the centre there? What the hell? I don't understand. For some reason, Arda Weireld was out at right back for us there as we transitioned into defence. I guess that was just a case of players filling in positions. Unfortunately for us, that sees Igalo go through, add to his goal tally. We knew he was going to be a threat in this game, and he just smashed it home. Lloris very slow to react. But, um, well, it was a good finish by the Nigerian forward there. And, uh, well, with Watford's first strike of the game, they strike first in this game, and perhaps we're going to be kicking ourselves uh, with Lamella missing that very, very early opportunity for us. Uh, right at the start of the game. That was a, a turning point, perhaps. Anyways, this game continues to develop on. We're continuing to boss possession and continuing to have shots. However, Watford, a team very much capable of playing on the counter. And, uh, well, they've already shown that once. We are going to have to be wary of that as this game progresses here. But no, 30 minutes gone now. Still not a lot of chances either way. Looking at our team, it's been pretty disappointing by everyone. No one really having a standout performance so far. Eric Dyer and Vertonghen on bookings as well It is a little bit concerning. We do have the ball here though, a set piece. Thrown straight to Yamat, but only gets cleared as far as Rose. Now with Deli Ali. Options in the middle, cuts inside, lays off to Lamella. Was that a foul? It was. Craig Cathcart clatters into the back of him. Commits the foul, and we are now going to have a penalty opportunity, perhaps. I believe it will be Harry Kane on it for us. In fact, it's not going to be. It's going to be Vertonghen. Have I not got my penalty takers set up? Let's hope Jan Vertonghen does the business for us. I thought I had my penalty takers set up. Vertonghen, please bury this. On his left peg, he slots it in. No pressure. Is he any good at penalties? Oh, he is quite good at penalties. Okay, that makes sense. I probably just ticked him without registering in my mind that he has... Uh, it's 13 penalties and 18 composure. Either way, he slots it home. Gomez did go the right way, but the booked centre-back gets the goal for us. And, well, it's a good goal by the Belgium. Oh, I love the little dancing there by Gomez. If you missed that, go back and watch it. He did, he did the little kind of jersey dudek jiggle and getting uh, flashbacks to Istanbul. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Ball whipped in Dini. An absolute sitter. He has to score that for Watford. Two yards out, blasts it over the bar. And while going into half-time, both teams have had chances. Watford have actually had more as the game's progressed. Uh, I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased with what I've just seen. Good response, all in all. Um, Deli Ali having an okay game, but nothing to stand out. I kind of want to change some things, if I'm honest. And I think the change I might make, maybe, to take off Lamella... You know, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it f 15 minutes. I'm gonna give 15 minutes just to see how this second half settles down before I do anything too rash. But there's no one really standing out as playing kind of particularly poorly for us. But there's no one kind of taking the game by the scruff of the neck at the moment. 
And that's what we're hoping to see perhaps a little bit more uh, in this second half. Of course, we have got to be wary of the Dini Agalo partnership. Um, that, that it's all, We've already been punished by it once. I know, well, but wow, that was a, a, a rash tackle by Barami. Gets a booking for it as well, 40 seconds in. Um, I hope that's nothing too major. Dini's picked up a knock as well. Maybe they'll have to sub him off. One can dream. He stays on the pitch. It's nothing major. That's a shame. I don't like to wish injuries upon people, but in this kind of game, I'm a fan of the dark arts. You know, if it, if it means getting the win, I'm all for it. Either way, we're the team in possession here. Son, options on the overlap. Danilo's there. He's going to go alone. Can he whip the ball in? He can. Harry Kane, back post, nods it in. Take a bow, my son. His 23rd goal of the season. And a, a really nice assist by Son as well. You know, a player who perhaps I would have taken off at halftime. But three minutes into the second half, a much better response here. Son, what a ball that is in. Harry Kane nods it. And, well, Gomez, no chance. Or not Gomez, Gomez. I called him Gomez earlier as well. It's Gomez. Gomez is, is a French striker, Jack. Send help. Let's see how we can get on as this game progresses now. Gom Where the hell did Gomez come from? Apparently, I love Gomez and I don't even know it. Answers on a postcard. Right, 25 minutes left. I should probably make some changes at this point. Eric Dyer's on a booking and struggling a little bit. I'm going to bring in Thiago Meyer for him. So I'll make a change there. Higher up the pitch, Lamella has been pretty poor. Eriksen's not had a great game either. Uh, but I think it's going to be Lamella we take off and uh, in, his fav uh, in his place. I think we're going to bring on Moussa Dembele and give him a run out. A player who... I do like Moussa Dembele, but I've not actually used him that much this year. I feel like the centre mid positions have been fairly nailed down as the season's gone on. And, uh, well, in the attacking midfielder department, I feel like we just have a few players who are slightly better than him. But he'll have a chance here to prove himself as we are bringing the ball forward. Harry Kane hits it straight at Gomez, who makes the stop. And, uh, well, that was a good opportunity uh, to get our noses a little bit further ahead. Obviously, we know that this Watford team has firepower. We know they can score. And, um, well, we need to take opportunities because we cannot take this one goal lead for granted. Worth noting that they are now playing with Isaac Success, Agano, and I believe Dini all on the pitch at once. Dini missing another sitter for them. How are they shaping up? Because that's three strikers. Okay, they're playing a 3 4 3. I'm going to change things a little bit, kind of just reacting to that, actually. And, um,. I kind I kind of just want to drop a few players uh, a little bit deeper. I don't want our fullbacks to be quite so adventurous. I don't think uh, going forward. Do we want to change anything else? So we probably should play out of defence just a little bit less, just because we're three uh, strikers. They're going to be you know covering a lot more of the passing lane. So it's probably better for us to be a little bit less uh, dilly dallying on the ball, or uh, you know just we need to be a little bit more careful, I guess, with our passing around the back. So we'll make those changes there. The Isaac success Dini and Agalo partnership. It's a little bit scary, but they're playing free at the back now, so I think there might be opportunities to capitalise, you know, on chances there. But as this game progresses on, 20 minutes left. Still 2-1 up, and we might have another chance here. Danny Rose inside to Ericsson. Tackles flying in, and it gets cleared up to Dini. Our fullbacks now in a lot better defensive place, but there's a free ball there to Isaac success. It wasn't found to him. Harry Kane might be through here. Can he finish it? He can't, Gomez, with another nice save to add to the collection. We've had two clear-cut chances and two half chances. To be fair to Watford, they've had chances of their own, but Loris very rarely called into action. A lot of sitters kind of blasted over the crossbar for them, but, well, it remains 2-1, but we remain with a highlight here. We remain with an opportunity. Danilo, options in the middle, whips it in. No one really there, but Ericsson latches onto it. Dembele's there. The sub has an impact and scores. He makes it 3-1. He's not scored many games, uh, not played many games this year. He's got his first goal of the season as well now. And, uh, well, at Vicarage Road, it looks like the Watford unbeaten run may be coming to a crushing end. Ericsson with the ball across. Dembele with a nice little volley on his left peg, to be honest, and with 18 minutes left... Things are looking a lot, lot better for us. Obviously, Watford committing men forward. We've capitalised on that. We've, you know, we've we've made our defence just a little bit more solid, and we've looked to exploit them higher up the pitch. Though chance here, and well, let's not count our chickens before they hatch because there may well be an opportunity here um, for Watford to kind of get back into this game. I'm going to make a few changes um, just to hopefully see out this game. We're going to uh, just, you know, switch to counter, play a 4-1-2-3. And hopefully we can just see out the remainder of this game on a counter-attacking system. That's the plan now. Two minutes left. And, uh, well, it looks like it should be game over. Throw in here. the way It is game over. It finishes 3-2 at Vicarage Road. We get what could prove to be a very, very important win as far as the title race is concerned. 
With that win, we go four points clear of the likes of Southampton and Sunderland, who have a game in hand. There's also Liverpool, West Brom and United, and a few other teams who are going to be you know, eagerly trying to close the gap on us in their games coming up this weekend. We'll quickly have a continue to just see how their games get on because this was another lunchtime kickoff. Just one thing uh, that I should make you guys aware of is I have a weird little bug in my game at the moment whereby uh, the board offered me a new contract, I rejected it, and then I asked the board to um, extend my contract, you know, using the board request feature rather than them approaching me. They said, yeah, you know what, you deserve a new contract, we'll approach you about it. Now, every day they come to me and offer me a new contract, and every day the game automatically declines the uh, the the interview and like the new contract for me so at the moment the board are coming to me every day desperately hoping that i'll stay at tottenham for another season i've been assured that um if you know i get to the end of my contract at the end of the season that the club will just put me on a ro rolling month long kind of contract if we do get to a situation however where my contract expires and the club want to sack me um given the fact that it's a bug that's preventing me from signing a new contract with tottenham uh, i will probably be forced to just add a new manager in charge of spurs which would be a little bit annoying and to be honest i'm hoping that either a workaround comes up for this issue uh, or in fact that you know there's a hot fix which fixes this issue because it is kind of a little bit of a problem for me but it's of course worth remembering this game is in a beta and uh as with my issue here, I recommend that if you do have any problems of your own in the FM17 beta, you log them on the forums so that they can be addressed for the full game, as the case will be with this bug now. So anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Hopefully you enjoyed today's game. A big result for us. It sees us close the gap on our title rivals in Watford. Hopefully the likes of Southampton and Sunderland can start slipping up too. And uh, yeah, I will be joining you guys next time. We do have a Champions League game against uh, Lyon, or Lyon, it's Lyon, coming up. Um, that's in a little while. We may well do a game in between then and now. There's a game against Sunderland that looks particularly appetising. Let me know if you'd like to see that down in the comments. Uh, if you've got any thoughts, of course, on this save, any comments with regards to my tactics, any questions you just want to ask about the game, feel free to leave them down below. And other than that, thank you so much for watching as always, guys. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. Hey.